Hello. Hello. Welcome. Welcome to, to Needles at the Ready. It is Saturday, March 5th. This is episode 56. I'm Kevin. And I'm Ray. And it's 2022. It is we 2022. We usually say the year. Not quite sure why. It's 2000. Because people go back and rewatch, so... Which has been so fun. Yeah, there's... Yeah. And weird. Fun. So, welcome. Somebody posted a... Oh, yeah. Needles at the Ready mug. These are not for sale. That I did not make properly. No. But that's okay. Like, like you. So, welcome to we our roll. YouTube channel where we talk about knitting, dyeing. Well, not like dyeing. Yarn dyeing. Yarn dyeing. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Crochet. That would be sometime. really morbid. That would be really Yeah, not so good. Yeah. It doesn't kind of go together. No. Um, so, and we are coming to you from Stratford, Connecticut, where we live with our dog, Tarquin, who we will have an update on. Yes, we will. So, it has. He may join us. He may. Yeah. He, he just laid down. Mm-hmm. And he just got some medication, so he'll yeah. probably be out for a little bit. So. So. Let's talk about our last two weeks. Okay. Great. Okay. Well. What have we done? We had a men's knit night. We did last weekend. That was fun. Saturday night. We did. We did a men's knit night. So for those of you who don't know, last year we had attempted to start it. it did. We did two months and then it just kind of fell off so we're already on track it, it fell out of our radar just like stuff going on so yeah. we the same people who had initially signed up we've just been inviting them back um sending out emails when we've been scheduling it on zoom mm-hmm. so we did one last saturday and had a bunch of yeah we chatted people. for like three and a half hours yeah, it went from like 7 it was a long time. p.m. our time till about 10 30 yeah. i think is when we finished yeah it was fun thank you all for coming yes it was it was a good time um, it's just nice to like hang out and, and chit chat and talk about things. Yeah. Know? Talk about knitting. Just talk about yeah. life. Talk about, um, recommend patterns and the like... holler, 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 the holler, holler, people who live in the holler. Yeah. We just learned some new <laughs> vocabulary and geography, which was good. Yeah. It was a, it's a really good time. Yeah. I really enjoyed doing it. So, and then I'd like to do like we did last year, we did kind of like a, um, Everybody like an open one, like an open at night. Yeah. Um. So keep your ears peeled for that. Your ears, peel those ears. Well, yeah, ears because typically it would say eyes, but yeah, but eyes probably because but ears. In keep this... all your senses to the ground. <laughs> we will be announcing something, maybe sometime soon. So what else for the last two weeks? So <clears throat> we'll just do the Tarquin update because that's kind okay. of been a lot of the last two weeks. So yeah. Tarquin, for those of you, um been here for a while tarquin's been going through some stuff for i think we're now in week six ish mm-hmm. um, so very fun he had a neuro consultation last week and can i just say they were awesome yeah you. oh my gosh let me show you so we had a um we're lucky enough there's a, a neurologist i think they're one of like three in the entire state or something like that oh i don't know i know that there's only i feel like it's just over a hundred in the country Oh, wow. So there's not many. Um, so what happened, if you remember, Tarquin hurt his neck and back like six weeks ago or whatever the case was, did it the week after that. And then either a week or two later, he was trying to jump on the couch um, when Ray was going to work to say goodbye. Yeah. And he missed, hit the cushions, and then um, was just super uncomfortable. Right. So after that episode, our regular vet recommended seeing the neurologist since this had been an ongoing issue that maybe um, he might need like a MRI or something. And um, so we went to go see the neurologist and look what I walked into when they called us in. Yeah, that's cute. Isn't that cute? They wrote welcome Tarquin on the little board. It was a really nice, um, it was a really nice like setup that they had. They were very professional, um, listened to everything I had to say. Of course, Tarquin acted like nothing was wrong at all. Yeah. Um, but they did a full exam. Um, we're not going to do the MRI at this point um, because he was healing and doing much better. And then now he has something going on with his back left leg, which has been going on for a little while, but we thought it was all related. The neurologist didn't think so. So I don't know if it's like dislocated or a pulled muscle, but he's having problems putting pressure on the leg. Sometimes he'll lose his balance, like the leg will give out. So we are taking him to our regular vet um, on Tuesday. On Tuesday. And he's back is on this pain? what having children is like? No, I don't think so, because children tell you what's going 
on. Yeah. Like you can, you know, like with a child, you can <clears throat> take their temperature right. and see if they have a fever. You yeah. know, I don't think so, Tarkin will let us take no. his temperature. But um, I don't think that'll do us any good. Yeah. So he's back on pain. But he meds. doesn't seem to be in any pain. Like we've oh. manipulated the foot and touched the leg. Yeah. He doesn't so seem to be in pain. And for those of you who recommended like getting a stairs, we did get oh, some stairs. Did. Last they night. came yesterday. So I did some training sessions with him. He started to go up and then he jumps. He tried to jump over them completely up onto the couch, but I was able to successfully get him to go down them. Yeah, we'll like do some three more or training. four times. So we'll try mm-hmm. some more today with him to see if that helps. So yeah, sometimes he just has trouble going up the stairs or jumping on the couch. Um, actually, right before we came up here, I was looking at him. I'm like, you are acting right now like you're fine. 100%. So I'm mm-hmm. really confused by you. Yeah. So we'll see. We'll it see could be happens. us. We're just very dramatic, maybe no, overprotective it's parents. Who knows? It is not. It's definitely not us. Yeah. It's it's him. So um, he's, you can, and you'll see in my knitting um, how distracted I am because of like this. It causes a lot of like stress. And so I, you'll see, I have a bunch of stuff to it show. It is. I was going to say, I was saying today, because um, we just got back from getting our, our hair cut. So I was talking to the lady who cuts our hair, and I said, it's a real, like, emotional, mental, and physical, um, not, sh- what's the word I'm looking for? Roller coaster? Kind of. It just takes so much energy out of you. It's exhausting yeah. in all three aspects. It's really exhausting to... To not be helpful, almost like know. you know, we're trying to catch him before he jumps, before he jumps off or down. Um, you know, all those things. It's it just takes a lot out of you. So in my knitting, you will see that there's not much. Right. In mine, I just kept picking up things, doing a few stitches, and putting them down. And there's, I made a little bit of progress on pretty much everything that I'm working on. I mean, I worked on three things throughout the last two weeks. Yeah. Um, That's okay. Maybe we'll title this episode "Chaotic Knitting" because we're kind of all over the and- place. And. I did a lot of, like, last weekend was a good weekend, right? Yeah. So he was fine last weekend. It was Monday or Tuesday that the legs started again. So last weekend, we were able to breathe. Like, it felt like we could mm. exhale after Waiting the neurology appointment. Um, you know what the exhale and the breathe just reminded me of Love, Simon? When, oh, what a great movie. I know. I've watched that so many times. You have? I've only seen it that once. Oh, my. I watch it Yeah. every couple of months. I watch that really? movie. It's, it's, a, a, good movie. it's a good movie. And I, I think it's a book, yeah? It is based on a book, yes. Yeah. And there is a show called Love Victor, which is on like Amazon Prime or Hulu. Oh. Uh, that's kind of related? based on it. I, oh, that's I don't cool. know if that's based on a book. Um, but I have, I did a lot of dying last weekend. Mm-hmm. Um, you sure did. You got so a I have lot a lot done. to show for that. Yeah, and I don't know. I I'm, I don't know when I'm going to do a shop update. I almost thought next weekend or next Friday, the eleventh, but I'm not quite sure yet. So if I do one, I'll post it on um, Instagram. Yeah. Maybe we'll figure out how to do like an announcement on the on YouTube's too we could. for people who don't have Instagram. Yeah, um, I think because I mean, you, I was gonna say if you follow us on YouTube, which obviously you all watch us on YouTube, this is where it happens. But never mind. So I was uh, off a couple of days while just making sure that Tarquin was um, not jumping up and down off of stuff. So I got a lot of. I watched every. I'm not every. I watched the important. Um, Star Wars movies. So I did okay. not watch episode one, two, and three. They are not my favorite. They're entertaining, but for the story, because I like Star Wars for the story, you know? For the story, I don't I don't like it. But that so, is a story. It's a it's, story of They just Darth tried to, Vader. I think that they just tried to figure, like, fit things in it. You know, we're not going to get into it. We're not, story. Jar Jar Binks, let's just, we're not going to get into anything else. Do you know I call my work friend's um, mom, her name's, I don't even know her full name, but she calls her Char. Char, So I call her Char Char Binks. No, that's stupid. (laughs) So anyway, I watched episode four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. Yeah, it was great. It was great. I felt like a nerd. And I knit a little bit and made sure that he was um, doing what he was supposed to do. And I think that's really it. What else have we done? Oh, I finished school. Not not school, but my class ended. I, I finished my last paper and project. I'm waiting for one more grade to come in, but I think I got an A. Um, so all of the, all, for this degree, all of the nursing classes are done. I still just need to do a couple of, um, what are those called? Electives. Electives. So I chose, I'm taking two classes at once this time. I'm taking, um, philosophy of world religion because I thought that sounded really interesting. And then I'm taking intro to film to satisfy like the art requirement, Fun. art requirement. Yeah. So those start, I think this week coming up. Yeah, and I think that's about 
it. Like, you know, work. Yeah. The usual. Yeah, this past week, Nothing I would super say. super exciting. Yeah, this week was not, was a stressful week. I barely. Agreed. I didn't knit Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, probably. Mm. Thursday? Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. No, Thursday I knit again. So that was it. Yeah. I didn't knit for like four days. Huh. So, all right. Let's do ad mini stuff. Okay. Ad mini stuff. We've got some awesome things happening. Um, we had a knit along going on just to get rid of this, not get rid of, gift our extra book, our sock ar- architecture book. We thought it would be fun to do a little uh, sock knit along. We called it Tickle Your Toes, which I thought was really cute. And I actually just closed the threads like 10 minutes ago and we pulled some winners. Do you have the, so, the prizes? What? The prizes? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes, I do. So... We have, we have a winner. So we have two winners. We two pulled winners. one from the FO and one from the WHIP. And then we got our prizes in the mail, which was super exciting. Super exciting. We could talk about the, the prizes um, first. Okay. So the we mentioned that um, a yarn dyer was making, was donating to the, the knit along, but we didn't say who it was, but. Maybe you all put two and two together. Why? Did we? Allude no, because to it? we were talking about. We just were nonstop talking about her. I think for a while. So look what was donated and by whom? Whom or who? Woo! Willens and Nosh. What? So she was Michelle was so generous and donated um, this lovely yarn. The this is super cool because um, wait. So this one here is a fingering weight, self-striping. This is the Blair Do You Have My Leg Warmers colorway. Yeah. So you have a, um, it's 90% superwash Targi, 10% nylon. It's a three-ply, 411 yards for 100 grams. And then really pretty. It's so pretty. I love it so much. This one is um, Ski Bum. It's such a good color. It's so good. This is on uh, DK. It's 100% superwash merino three ply. It's 243 yards for 100 grams. And she also sent this 50 gram skein. I'm not even going to call it a mini. It's a 50 gram skein of um, that nice uh, solid. And it's 122 yards for the 50 grams. It's also 100% superwash merino three ply. So we are going to be giving the sock architecture and one of these sets to the FO winner, which was number 140, Happy Michelle W. That's you. If that's you, please contact us via Ravelry, Instagram, or you can email us. Our email address is linked down below. And we would be happy to get this out and so excited for you to receive this. I think you're in the UK, so I'm not quite sure how that works, but it might take some time. I don't know. But Michelle, I'm assuming that's your name, Happy Michelle W. Please, um... Get to get back to us and congratulations. That's so incredible. The what? Don't know. Am I being dramatic? <laughs> I feel, I feel like, the energy. I feel, I feel like you might be because I think the coffee is really starting to kick in. I'm only on, I've only I had one I, cup today. Well, so I thought I'm I only like, had two cups. Um, so this will be my third, but I may have had three already. I've been up since six. So I'm not quite sure. I've been up since eight. I, I was I up though from three thirty to four thirty this morning. Okay, and then this lovely set. Look how gorgeous this is. I know. I was just trying to see we if I could find this. I was just I trying to see if I could find different. it um, knit up, but yeah. I don't know that I saw it on Instagram. I probably saw it on our site. Oh my gosh, it's it's absolutely gorgeous. Ski bum. Yeah. Um, this is number one hundred eleven from our whip thread, and that is Daydreams sixty three. So if that is you, come on down. You are our winner and next contestant. So, with all that being said, too, if you are not a fan of self-striping yarn, just and you let have us know, sure. and we can um, substitute for regular sock yarn. Yeah, no judgment. So, that is to our winners. Congratulations. Yes, that's so exciting. And thank you for allowing us to um, Here, find a new do you home. Have a place over there for it? I, I really don't. don't, but that's okay. To um, Thank you for giving us an opportunity to find a home for our extra book. extra book. Do we have any extra other extra books? That was fun. No, we and it was nice and, and quick. We had like yeah, you know, 160 people join one thread and 180 something join another. So that was really. And fun. are we starting a new knit along? Yes, or a make along. We'll do a new make along. Make along. So, last year we did the spring cleaning 
Mal. Yeah, so we'll do that again. It'll start today and at the May 31st, right? May 31st. May 31st is when it will end. And 30 days, half September, April, it's, June. The idea is just to um, get rid of your whips. So Yes. Clean order, it up. Get ready for the spring. In order to enter. It must be a whip. It must be a whip that you work on and... So we'll have a chatter thread and we'll have an mm -hmm. FO thread. Your whip must have started prior to today. I was going to say the first of March. The but fine. first, well, that was only. I mean, I mean, today's the fifth. Okay. Let's not get dramatic. Okay. Okay. Well, then don't set things in stone. <laughs> so, um, if you had started a whip in March, <laughs> you can enter, but it not, must be a whip. We'll have a FO thread and a chatter thread. Maybe we'll throw an Instagram post on there as well. A hashtag. Yeah, you know what I want to do too. At some point, we need to do a shawl. Shalala long? No. Somebody did a shalala la la It's um who's that? We share needles. Oh yeah, that was cute. I love when people say things like that. Who was that woman? Oh shoot, I'm gonna get this all wrong. You... Maybe I shouldn't speak. Don't speak, please. <laughs> what what does it have to do with? Let's see if we can figure this out. There's a podcaster who I said, Oh, I haven't seen her in a while. I feel like it's house something house. That we were showing up on our subscription yeah. page last night. Yeah. She's got the curly hair and the glasses. Is it House of Magic? No. I know who you're talking about. She's Shucks. from, I think she's like in the UK. She is, and she's got a beautiful accent, and I yeah. love hearing her She's speak. a sewist as well. Yeah. Oh, gosh, I can't remember. But anyway, she was doing, um, she was doing a knit along or something, maybe last year or the year before, and she had a really clever name. And see, this is why I shouldn't speak, because yeah, probably I, not. I can't get any of the details correctly. Correct. But anyway. But we should do a shawl. We should at some point. We're going to do our Let's Hear It for the Boys, too, this year. Again. I know. So I already have some ideas of yarn dyers that okay. I would like to make some purchases from for prizes and probably some bag makers. So that Ooh. if you guys don't know, we've done this will be our third year doing a Let's Hear It for the Boys where we um, buy some. Our prizes are from male dyers and bag makers. Mm -hmm. And then it's just to kind of bring out. Celebrate like, the guys in the community and, yeah, the, and all that. Yeah, the men yeah. in the community and patterns just because mm -hmm. it's hard for us to find it. So it's a really good way to help you all find some patterns that maybe you're not aware of. Yeah. So that you can or that you for can, the, yeah, for the, the guys in your life. Guys in your life. Yeah. So, so. that's going to start usually in June. Um, but this spring cleaning, Mal, crochet, so, I mean, I don't, you know, Paper if you have crafts, some, yeah, know. some things hanging out finish that the you just want to finish it up. Maybe. Oh, what a great idea. Yeah. Lovely. So that'll right. that'll go, and we'll do a we'll do a hashtag. I'm not quite sure what it'll be yet, but we'll have that link down below in our show notes. Okay. Okay. So let's talk about some knitting. Let's talk do you about have FOs. Mm -mm. I have I have one, and I'm gonna call. I'm gonna say two. Okay. I I'm gonna commit one that I finished last night. All right. I'm just gonna jump into mine because mine's not that exciting. You guys have seen it. Mine five. is similar, right? That yes. So this I'll... is in my bearded pearl bag. Where's okay. my, here, my bearded pearl bag. These are one of the first bags that we got from them, right? Yes. This is the first bag. The canvas. I love it. It's so good. So guys, I have continued on. Wait, but wait till later. Oh, don't, I can't. Don't come at me. I'm not coming at you. But I might DM you. Is that what it's called? <laughs> that's Slide a into your DMs? That's a direct message. I may slide into your DMs. <laughs> Or am I might at you. Is that what it's called? That's when you're at. Do the at symbol. Yeah. At somebody. Don't at me. I'm going to at you. <laughs> Done with you. Done. All right. So my half and half dishcloth. Woo, it's beautiful. You know, this is based on the half and half wrap from Pearl Soho. I know, which we should do. Oh, God. So if I do that, though, then we need to buy linen quill. Because I know. everybody uses linen quill for it. So that's what well, we Well, you dare to, to be buy. different. No, I don't want to be different. I want to use it. So this is cedarwood and gray cloud. This is the buttercup cotton buttercup. from Pearl Soho, which has now easily become my favorite cotton yarn. It, I don't know if it still is, but it was on sale for eight twenty-five for a hundred gram skein, which is, I think, equivalent to the price that you would pay for two skeins of dishy. Oh, um, and if you go and spend a certain amount, you get free shipping. It's quite a bit to spend to get free shipping. So Kevin, Kevin this might have hit that criteria. This is why we have a lot of buttercup cotton. Um, but it's my favorite dishcloth pattern. It has short rows and you pick up stitches. 
I cast on 48 stitches on a US 3, which I don't remember the millimeters for that. 3.5? No. I feel oh. like it's a th maybe it's a 3.25. Mayhaps. So 8 is 5, 7 is 4.5, 6 is 4. Oh, I do not. 5 is 3.5. 4, I think, is 3.25. It's a 3 millimeter, I think. And this pattern is free. It I've, is free on I've Pearl Soho's it. website. Yeah, it's it's on like the actual web page, so there's not like a downloadable PDF. I don't think for it. No, I wish there was. I wish there yeah. was one just so I could save it to um, Good Notes. Yeah, but this is it um, here, and we'll have that link down below. It'll take you right to their to their site, and you yeah. can do. And they have you just scroll down, and they have the pattern. And yeah, so you start here. Work your way up here. Yeah. Then you start here and work your way down here mm -hmm. or something like that. And then you do a little I-cord loop. It really is. It's the softest totally. wash cloth that I've used. Uh, US 3 is 3.25 millimeters. Oh, okay. Angles. I was kind of close. Close. Close-ish. So, I, and I don't know what I did with this one. It's a different size than my other ones that I've knit. But this one's for me. Maybe your tension was different because you might have been stressed out. Probably. Probably. But yeah, so that was my FO. I started it on Thursday, finished it yesterday. Super easy. You could literally do one in a day. Yeah. You could probably do two in a day, yeah. to be honest. So, um, and just to show, these are old ones that I did. These are gift ones. Mm -hmm. And this is mine. Because I have the two um, face cloths. Yeah, they kind of, they match that. The so I have, colors. now I have two face cloths and two washcloths. Lovely. That's great. Um, I'll show one of mine too. I still have to weave in the ends and do some finishing, but I am calling this a, a finished Which object he, because it's all done. He just changed that. I did. I was going to say, you know what? I'm going to consider the this a whip. This is the he changed. Yeah. But it's pretty much done. Not really. But I also did one. I have never done one before. Look what I did. So what's really cool about the pattern is it comes with recommendations to do this color change. Yes. So the color But I did not follow that. You did not because the color striping or change multicolored section is your first triangle. You did yours on the second triangle. Yeah, I did. And so you can see like I originally started doing the half and half um, here. And then when you pick up the wraps or knit the wraps or whatever, you know, you carry this yarn over here and you just you build off the short rows you know yeah, this way it doesn't look bad though so then i got halfway through i was like oh i'm gonna add a new color i was like it makes sense in my head let me just add it now so the, i think the only difference in the pattern is they they construct it in a way that you don't have this you know right. this lighter color here it just merges you know nice into this main color Correct. but i mean it's a it's a dishcloth or washcloth um, but I have to say, it was a fun, it really was a fun pattern. And it's super to do. fast. It is super fast. But I think it's really, um, I think it's really cute. And it's neat how they give you so many different, like, ideas for color blocking yeah. and adding additional triangles. I, let me see. I, I just see scrolled my... up so you, they can see some of it. But you, you know, and then you build the I cord. And um, I just have to weave in my ends. And as I weave in my ends, that's when I'm going to secure the loop yeah for the i cord and just weave in my ends but it's pretty much done i could i could technically use it now um Cute so it, though right yeah I'd i don't know it. the colors that i used um i have them okay actually i don't know if i have them all i do i used heirloom white which is this one um bluebird egg which is this one and evening blue which is this one they also gotta love our little notebooks i think that would be a really great yarn and i think they it's have so, a pattern for it for a baby blanket. It's so drapey, and it's really it really is it's so soft. It's so nice. If that's a great idea for a baby blanket, yeah, because it's I, machine washable. And I know people enjoyable. don't like cotton, and I tell you, no, I, it's not like working with. It's not like working with no. um, the stuff from Joanne's that we have. Mm -mm. It's not even like working with Dishy, and I like Dishy. Yeah, I like it's Dishy better too. than working. I've been with using Dishy. Dishy to as waste yarn. <laughs> I use Dishy as waste yarn. Yeah. Um, Cotton's a great waist yarn. I also yeah. have some old, I forgot what brand it is. Not Pearl Soho. What's that company? Oh, you have. Cascade. Mm -hmm. I have some old Cascade cotton yeah. that I use as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so the pattern, again, is Pearl Soho and it comes with five layouts. So you. Yeah, look how fun. Like you so just do six. Some, it's very modern. I think it looks very modern. Yeah, six technical patterns. So you have your regular layout. Then mm -hmm. this calls layout one, two, three, four, and five. 
So I think it's just fun. You could customize them for people. Yeah, easily. Oh, wait, guys, let's see. Oh, no, this is... Right now, it's having 25% off flax down. I have no idea what that is. Me neither. Let's check the price of it, because it's here. Um, lollipop, so yeah. lollipop, oh, lollipop, you guys will continue lollipop. to see a bunch of them. Mm-hmm. Um, dishcloths are like sometimes my hat knitting, yeah. where it's just a nice palette cleanser. Yeah. And um, Oh, you know what, though? This one, this pattern actually recommends, not recommends, but it calls for cotton pure. Cotton pure. I use the buttercup cotton. Right. Which doesn't look like it's on sale anymore. Oh. But keep an eye keep on an it. Keep an eye on it because it definitely goes on sale yeah. quite often. All right. So that was my only FO. All right. I have one more FO. Okay. And I posted this on Instagram because I couldn't wait to share it. I loved it so much. This is the Tallow Hat. Let me show you by Jonathan Tallow. I was waiting for this to come out. Um, he's been posting this on Instagram. It's a brioche hat with a cool stockinette um, ribbing. And I'll show you, but look how cute. It's in two sizes because the brioche, look how cute. Brioche is super stretchy. Isn't that so cute? Brioche is super stretchy. So I wasn't sure what I was going to do with it, but the yarn I chose um, is Mace of Skeins. Macy, by the way, is having a shop update today, um, 2 p.m., I think, Central Time. So right now, if you – yeah, 2 p.m., well, 3 p.m., Central Time? Macy's actually having a sale. Yes, but her shop right now is closed. So if you go – I linked her down below, and by the time this goes up, it should be all open. But she's got a ton of skeins that are you know pre-dyed ready to ship like 500 of them or something yeah and she's got a uh like 30 percent off sale i think that she's having um it is it's 30 percent. yeah and so if you go to her shop now before she before she updates it's it's gonna say that it's closed and there's a password there for any of her patreon viewers to shop early oh that's but cute. if you're, yeah that's i thought it was idea. a great idea but if you're not a patreon um supporter of hers just wait until i'll check now yeah until that time and then everything will pop up and she's got a ton so we're probably going to stock up a little bit but macy was was aw- she's so awesome anyway I, she yeah. sent us she sent us a bunch of yarn um i think around the holiday time um she did. yeah and i saw this hat and i was like oh my gosh i have like the perfect yarn for it so this is the year. I'll show you the hat. I promise. Um, I know you're all. So she will, her shop will be up at 2 p.m. Central Standard Time. So that's 4 p.m. East Eastern Time. Right? No. No. 3, 3 p.m. Eastern Time. Yeah. Um. So it should be up by the time you see this because usually our videos go up around 4 o'clock or so. So I used her. It's DK. So this is Mace of Skeins. I used her Spade DK base. Which is seventy five percent superwash merino, twenty five percent nylon. Um, it's about two hundred forty five yards in a hundred gram um, skein. I use the colors winter pine, which is this gorgeous beauty. Isn't that beautiful? It's such a good color. Oh, it's so Actually, good. Actually, and here it is again, right? Yeah, this is in fingering though. So this is her fingering. Mm-hmm. So this, I I would assume that these won't be in her shop because this is her winter collection. Yeah, I don't know what she already has. But just to give you guys an idea, this is yeah, she's an awesome. It's such a beautiful awesome dyer. color. Yeah, and I love these because they were like, they're pretty solid. I would say some there's some tonality to them. No, they're ton- they're, they're definitely tonal. They're pretty. Oh yeah, they're tonal. You know what was cute about this too is when she sent them. Remember, she said she like went up to the screen. Yeah. And she put the colors next to our faces to see what would be work for us. And she's like, yep, I'm sending them this. And this one is Cranberry Jam. That. So with their powers such, combined is is gorgeous. It's such a and good And this color. is what I, this is what I did. So this is the tallow hat. Um, I, That's a fun. Um, is this not great? What's the word I'm looking? Crown. Crown. So the crown decrease is a lot of fun. Um. It was very interesting. Decreasing in brioche is actually, it's scary. I hold my breath every single time. And I've only knit a handful of brioche, not even that much. Two brioche hats. So I've only decreased You have brioche in this? Hats. Oh. So to do like decreases oh, and saying. stuff. Um, but this one, I, the way that he did it was, was wonderful. Um, the stockinette, it's a folded brim 
which is fantastic. Um, so you basically, I knit, I'll tell you all about it. Let me put it on. This is the small tell because it stretches um, so much. I wanted to do the small and I wasn't sure with the weights of the yarn, like if I would really have enough. Um, and I wanted to do like a second hat. So we'll see what happens. I think that's a good idea because both brioche hats that I knit. Yeah. No, I did one brioche hat, right? My so, Harlow. Uh, Harlow. This is, this is the hat. It fits me. It does. It fits perfect. Um, it's it's nice and snug, but there's like it's definitely stretchy. Still, the brioche you can see is um, you can stretches see the out quite a bit. You can yeah. definitely see the brioche in that. Um. So, if you all are interested, you can really knit the brim of the hat as long as you want to. And here's what the inside looks like. Yeah, so you, it's fully reversible. So you can have a primarily cranberry color hat. I just got to trim those. Yeah. I wanted to, I blocked it so I didn't tell. Um, but I love the, I love that. I want to do them reverse now. You know, so I want to do, because these colors together I think are gorgeous. So I want to do this with the folded brim. Oh, then, I see what you mean. I was like. Yeah, because of the brim. There you go. You know? Reverse. Yeah. You can see my ends. I just have to clip. I, they're woven in, but woven in, woven. So I did the small. I used for the the stockinette portion. He has you. I used the recommended needles for the hat. So you're actually going up a needle size for the brim on this hat and down a needle size for the brioche, which makes okay. sense because brioche is so stretchy. Right. And there's no ribbing in um, in this. But the st I think the stitches look good. Everything looks nice and even. Yeah. Um there and it is it is nice and stretchy and very warm because it's a double layer so i knit um i did five inches for the brim total and then i folded it up and um you cast on with a provisional cast on not provisional yes, yes provisional um so the the brim i used the us6 and the body of this hat uh the brioche i did a us4 and yeah, it was really good. I knit this six and a half inches um, tall, which is the the recommended length. And so it's definitely a beanie. It's definitely a beanie, but you could definitely go higher if you wanted a little or bit slouchier. It's a toque. Toque. And I was thinking like this would look really cool in a slouchy hat with maybe half the length of the brim. I don't know. And a nice pom pom at the end of it. I think it looks good as a beanie. I think it looks good too. I'm I'm really really happy with this. I'm sorry it, it clashes with my. Oh, you want to talk about what I'm wearing too? Do you Let's... want to talk about what you're? Why would I want to talk about what you wear? So what else can I say except that I love it? It's super squishy. The yarn was incredible to work with. It's my first time using uh, Mace of Skeins. Here and I wanted to. We had some more of hers just to give. Oh you guys yeah, an sure. Idea, since she is having the update, so these were all in her. I think winter. This one isn't. This is seaside, so that wouldn't be. Oh winter. yeah, no, it's. Beautiful. And this one was icicles. This one eggnog, which is, I just love this. Oh, I still have to figure out what I'm going to knit with this. I know it's delicious. Um, but yeah, so, please, um, check out Macy's shop today. Yeah, totally. At, two p.m. Central Standard Time. Yeah. Um, so I have. Eighty-eight grams left over. Oh, that's quite a bit. Right, a ton, and I have fifty-two grams. That's Let's still... over for this. So um, this was great because I want to knit many more of those. I think that they're really good. And I have the yarn from um, from Jill Zielinski, the from Knitterella. The, um... Shoot. Here. I was thinking of putting some of these together. Do um... you want them all? No, but that's okay. It doesn't matter. But these are these are fifty grams, so I was gonna try to knit another one. Um, oh, you could. Yeah, right. Yeah. With some of with some of the North Bay fiber. So anyway, I'm very pleased with that. I'm super happy. I love the. I did make some mistakes, totally, because that's just how I roll. But you know, now that it's done, you can't really unless you're like really looking for them. They're not in your face. Like there's, there's a, a, see, there's like a drop, like a, I actually think that's where you're weaving in your end. Uh, Flip it inside out and see. I don't think it is because I remember. No. Yeah. Mm. 
right there and then do this no that's not there oh maybe not no okay it doesn't matter it's my own little signature that's how i roll so but super cool right i'm, yes. I'm very happy with this he is a um i love all of his patterns he actually just came out with the dk version of that i think i talked about this last time of what that astri- uh, oh the shawl that shawl that is in a, a name is it from ireland no, it's um. Oh, now let's pull it up. I know we just did this. I, I feel like I was trying to avoid the name of it because I can't say it. <laughs> Arsringer, Arsringar. It means like tr- circle of, like tree rings or life rings. Um, it's a two color. Well, there's a DK version of this. Okay. Now, which is great. So I bought that. All right um okay right. and that is all of, of the fo's fo's oh let's talk about this because it's getting kind of warm so i'm gonna take it off probably do you guys remember this <laughs> they, like if maybe you didn't maybe people didn't join us when we were doing this this is stephen west's latest mystery knit along i don't know what i was thinking with this the is colors. huge i know why does yours feel bigger than mine well that's what she said so the uh this is the Shawlography. Shawlography. Were you dancing? Yeah, because it's like choreography. I couldn't remember the name. Um, and I like the colors are just extreme. This is using all of Lolo did it. Her quotable isn't this quotable Dumbledore? Is it? Yes. I think it is. No, is it? Yes, because yeah. this is. Yeah, it's all quotable. This is a newspaper one. Yeah um yeah this is this that's not words though i don't know i don't know i just i wish i had a project page i just know that this is something newspaper yeah i'm pretty sure that this was all like the solids of um what did you knit all out of amanda knits this isn't amanda knits no amanda knits i did my um vertices vertices that's right yeah but i think you know it's funny because i was like oh my gosh that's so loud i'll never wear it I don't know if I'll ever wear it like on the regular, but I wore it to work the other day <laughs> and everybody's like, oh my God, it's so cool. It is really cool. If you it look is. at it, it's a neat piece. I will never ever oh my gosh, do no, anything was, like this was, again. That was, but the thing I took I'm, a lot of time. This was extreme applied, applied bind off, applied yeah. border, applied border. No. So, but this is it. This is my shawl. It's actually a really good knit. It's like, a, it, I know. That I know. In retrospect, it taught me a lot. I've never done. What's this? Bobbles. Oh no! Please. Is it just an end? It's just an end. Yeah, it's just an end. Oh. Yeah. See, it's woven in there. Okay. Okay. <sighs> I was gonna say. Scary. Um, yeah, I've never done bobbles and shrimps and. <laughs> All those things that we did. And then this was my first brioche. Yeah, it... Um, is that another end? What the hell did I do? Oh, no. It's just a little fuzz. Yeah, it was a very good learning shawl. Yes. Cause it was again, like a sampler. It's super squishy. Neither one of us had done bobbles, brioche. No. Or applied borders. Right. These crisscrosses. Those I've done. I've never done those. I've done those Those were on Those were kind of fun. The hipster light. Yeah. It, sure, I know you guys have They were done already, differently, but. though, I think, on the hipster light, but they were very similar. Yeah. In some place else, too, I feel like. Maybe I don't not. Know. But if you're looking, I have another brioche project that I'll show you, too. But if you're really looking for a very easy way to learn brioche, all of his videos for this shawl are on YouTube. And his brioche tutorial, like how he walks you through each stitch. Yeah. It totally made me very comfortable to try it. He explains things so well. He takes his time, goes through every little thing, um, and it gave me the confidence to try it. And then now it's, you know, I, I really it's, enjoy it. Yeah, and it's not scary once you... No, you understand like the kind of yeah. like what you're going to be doing. And you, and it's the same thing over and over and over again. And doing two colors way easier than one color. Yeah, agree. So I, I would recommend one color brioche. doing a two-color brioche yeah. first. But anyway, um, that was... That was something else. All right, now we have some whips. Oh, oh, I have two whips. Okay. How many do you have? A lot. How many? One, two, three. Oh, four. Oh, four. Okay, so then you go Just, first. I only have four. I'll go in between your whips. 
All right. I will. Let's stick with the brioche because I didn't make much progress on this one. Um, it's my chip basket, which you can't get anywhere. Chip. <laughs> I didn't show this last time, but I've showed this quite a few times. I did not make a lot of progress, but I feel like I made some progress and I want to talk about it just because I do love this project so much. I'm using the combined um, Advent Calendar Christmas at Hogwarts by Yarn Cafe Creations and Dragon Horde Yarn. Mother daughter, we talked about this. And this is year five. This is year five. Um, so in here, I have all of my minis and my used minis, and I've caked up. I've caked up um, a few more so that I'm ready to to just go. Because that was my problem with this, was that I would finish a section, be ready for my next color, and then not feel like winding the yarn. Mm. You know, you know I think, especially I'm with the minis. I think I'm going to move my buttercup cotton to my chip basket. You should. That would be great. And then you can just kind of like pick, pick out of it. Pick colors out of it. So I love it. I may have it just like sitting next to yeah, me. On the, I think I'm going to do that today. Yeah, on the floor. So, oh, the the pattern that I'm doing is the Brioche Adventure, also by Jonathan Tallow. I thought it was super cool. Um, Brioche Adventure, you're, you're using your advent calendars and um it's i think it's coming out really really cool so this is what i have so far it's not you know not super big progress Wait, i did i was right here yeah so i did two more two more sections i love how it i love how it looks and then the, the cool concept of this is that you're using your main color uh in one section becomes your contrast color in the next section um and then you do this really cool, just like garter ridge in between each section, which brings those two colors um, back together. So like the back is, it's fully reversible and it's gonna look almost exactly the same from the front and the back because you're doing the contrast and the main there. Are you okay? Yeah, I was just looking. So this is your main color. And then I was looking for the main color, that main color in here. Right. So the main color, it's from the. This is the. This is the contrast color. Your contrast color from the row below becomes the main color. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. That's I said it backwards. Okay. So your contrast color from the color before becomes your so main color. So the blue in here, in this row, became yes. your main color yep. up here. Then the color in the con between yep. became your main color. Exactly. Up here. Okay. Isn't that fun? Yeah. So um, I've just been randomly grabbing skeins, but making no, not actually. That's that's a lie. Why are you I, lying to them? I've been half random, and, and I have a little bit of a system. So my system is I'm alternating the skeins um, between Dragon Horde Yarn and Yarn Cafe Creations. So each each color, one is from one, one is from the other. And I'm just, I am grabbing colors that I think will contrast with each other. Um, I'm not going for a fade or any of that stuff. So if you're following along, I am keeping track of what colors I'm using for that and in what Oops. order. And that's really fun that they provide oh, yeah. so each one, names for their minis. Yeah, which is great. So like on the the skein, you know, it has like the you know the name of the yarn and the base, which is so helpful. Um, especially for this project. But good for them, because I am telling you, oh, y'all, it is so hard to come I up with know. colorway names. So this is going to take me forever. I started this January 8th, and, you know, and who cares? I'm grabbing it, a little bit, doing a little bit. It's going to be a long-term project. It's also not your main focus. No. If it were your main focus, right. it'd be much further So on. I'm on the seventh color. The color six was um, Order of the Phoenix, which is this, like, fiery. This one here? Yep. And then color seven I just added in was creature. So that that's creature? creature? Yeah, that should be creature. Yep. So this is creature is still attached. So now creature was my contrast color. I'm ready for a new color. So I'm going to use creature now as my main color. And I'm going to be pulling the other one um, as the contrast. Really oh. fun pattern. I would yeah. just get the pattern and like... You can make it as large, as big, or as small as you want to. I mean, you can even you don't have to use the advent if you want to keep it um, two colors, two colors, you know, three, four colors, whatever, whatever you have. Or you just use scraps. Um, 
It's super fun. And I really love brioche because it's so just relaxing. You're going back and forth. The great thing about this pattern too, without giving too much away, is that you're not increasing or decreasing with brioche. Um, so your increases and your decreases are like SSKs and um, knit front back. Easy. And that's that. Easy peasy Easy lemon peasy. squeezy. So that's one that I've worked a little bit on as well. Good job. Thanks. High five. What else? Way you to go. Do you want me to go? No, I'm going to go now. All right. So this project is living in my fringe supply bag. So I mean, on a I don't know where I was because I forgot to put a marker in it because I think I knit oh my God, it's this beautiful. during our men's knit night for a little bit. Oh, yeah. So this is just my DK sock. Um, and I'm using, two, I actually like am using two patterns for this and I don't know why. So I'm using the pattern from Kemper Ray. The, the summer socks? Are they, is that what they're called? Um, I don't remember. I got to go to my sock folder. Socks. Spree socks. Oh, spree. So I'm using, right. this is the spree socks. It's a free pattern, a DK pattern by Kemper Ray. Um, I used that. And then for some reason I was having issues with my heel. So I went and I used the heel from the crazy sock. K. Oh yeah. Uh, the crazy sock ladies DK sock yeah. pattern. Just so I, I don't know what my problem was, mm -hmm. but my yarn is meddling kids by to the max. Who's now Frankie gray fibers. Um, so I did the one mini. It came with two minis. So we it's have so much fun. These are the two minis. I'm really hoping I have enough to do two socks. Have you weighed anything? Mm, no, I don't think so. Okay. Um, so I did the brown as my cuff. It's 48 stitches on a US 6. I think. US 6? No, that's a lie. US Holy 4. cow, I was going to say. 3.5 millimeter, US 4. It's still pretty large. So needle. 48 stitches. I'm doing Magic Loop, Chagu, Red Lace, interchangeable set. And I did seven inches after my cuff. Mm -hmm. Did heel flap and gusset, which is my favorite heel. And then I think I'm still doing decreases. If No, I think I'm past that two, four. Yeah, I'm past my... Um, oh, good. So you're just gusset. now knitting your... Yeah. Oh, yeah, I finished my gusset somewhere around there. I'm oh, like yeah, an perfect. inch past the gusset. So I'm almost, I'm probably about halfway to my toe. They're so, so much fun. That would be perfect for spring. Well, they're DK socks, so I don't know. Yeah, the colors are perfect for spring. The colors are fantastic. Yeah. I love how fun they are. It's Me a too. nice, bright. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's just, it. I look it's at a happy, it. It makes you happy. Yeah, I look at it and I can see it. the bus. You know, oh, I can yeah, see totally. or the van rather. The van. I can see their van. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fun to knit. The colors bring me joy. So that is that. All right. I think I'm gonna make that my focus over the next two weeks. Possibly. I don't have a focus. I, can't, I do I like. I cannot focus. I do like to focus on one project because I do like. I to know finish. you do. Um, I could do my socks. These okay. are actually in one of our acquisitions. Okay. So Should talk about that? it. So. Let me show you the socks, and then we'll show you the acquisition. I did not make much progress um, on this one as well, or either. I was just at the cuff, and I, I just got down to the point where I'm at my heel. Um, I knit this during our men's knit night as well. So I did the first one. We talked about this. This is Kevin's yarn in rhubarb, which is the colorway. And it's a 80-20, I believe. Kevin's got yes. some dyed up um, already. I do. I have some. Ready to go. Because a lot of you were asking about it. And it's such a fun color. I do. I said to Ray, I feel like this batch is brighter. So I have some on 75-25. Yeah. I want to say on all the bases. By accident, I dyed some on worsted. I wasn't paying attention and I, I thought it was did. DK. Yeah. So I have some worsted. I think I might have some DK. Yeah. And then I think I have 80-20 and 75-25. So this is the simple sock um, with integrated heel pattern. This is, it just tells you how to pronounce it, but it's still, I can't pronounce it correctly. But there's the pronunciation down there. 
as well. And it's by um, Albina McLaughlin. And the reason why, it's a simple pattern. We talked about this before. It gives you yarn, like gauges and counts for DK, sport, and fingering, which is so fantastic. It has sizing for all of them. Tells you how many skeins that you you need. It's a it's a very good pattern. Talks about tension and stitch gauge and all of that fun stuff. The reason why I wanted to give this a try is that integrated heel, and we talked about this last time too because I had finished that sock. The heel fits perfect. It's um it's a take on like a, a gusset um, heel flap type of construction, except you're not going back and forth. You're only doing short rows a, sh a short amount of time, no pun intended, just to turn your heel. So these are the short rows are, are here. So I'm just at the point where I'm going to be adding the heel on this one as well. Um, not, no, nothing major, but it's fun. Kevin, you did a really good job dyeing them. Thanks. You're welcome. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thank you for screwing up and cutting the yarn in half. <laughs> right? So that I can knit with it. And I'm doing 72 stitches on 9-inch circular needles. Chowgu. Red lace, fixed. Chow and who? red lace, fixed. T. Earl Grey, halt. Where's that from? Star Trek. Oh. That's Captain Jean-Luc Picard of the USS Enterprise. Stardate. Do you know any Stardates? No, because they make them up. Did you know that? They just and say until, whatever they want? Yep, and then until, until, I believe, relatively late in the franchise... They were like, oh shit, we should probably figure out a system for the star dates. And then they came up with a system. But prior to that, they were just making up numbers. Like Kirk, they were just made up numbers. So they would just be filming and they just. I think like, they wrote it in, but. Star date. Yeah. 1526.95. Yes. Yep. Because it sounded futuristic. Um. So that's that. And this. 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 This is living. In our, in our new bags by a collaboration between Les Garçons and... I, I want to say this Paradise one. Bay? Paradise Island. Oh. And it's an updated uh, graphic where I think we should... Did we show these already? No. No, because we... we talked about them. They there's, had their shop update during right, the last... So there's podcast. Max using his drop spindle and Vincent doing his dyeing and his dye pot. These bags are so incredibly... Um, well made and they're so convenient for like a sock or a hat so excuse me I couldn't wait to start using it the minute we got it because I love them I think I'm going to start putting my pins and stuff on them but that's that so I'll probably get the heel done this weekend so then I can use this as my like just knit in the round project where I don't have to think much about although I do need to finish this next one that I'm going to show you is that, am I going more? No, I'm going next. Because oh, okay. you've done two now? Yeah. So I'm going to do one. Wait. Yeah, you go again. I mean, it doesn't have to be matchy-matchy. <laughs> no, I'd like it to be matchy-matchy. Okay. So go again. All yes. right, Mr. Matchy-matchy. So this next one is a little bit of a slog fest. However, I'm making... I've made a lot of progress. This is the i always get it wrong easy folded poncho by church mouse designs church mouse classics easy folded poncho i'm going to be working on this i feel like until i die <laughs> um it's just a giant rectangle i don't know when i started it um, you made a lot of progress on it. I feel like I did too, but I still like have quite a bit to go. I'll show you. Um, I started this on January 11th, so that's not too bad. No, two months. Two months. That <laughs> just got. But uh, you again, it just you're not a I'm single. Not. I have a hard time. Knitter. I do. I have a hard time. You like, and I'm not apologizing for it. It no. is what it is. You're I'm having fun. I'm in control of my own knitting. You I will am... knit five all on five items in one night. I will. Yes. Yeah. And you judge me. I don't judge you. You do judge me. No. You, you say it out loud and you have, your face says it that you judge me. This is using um, Knit Picks City Tweed DK. Go ahead. 
City. I was going to say, so we talked about this last time, the City Tweed DK. Yes. And a couple of people commented that they've used oh, that yeah. Thank as you. yarn in sweaters. Because I had asked about the alpaca content in right. it. What, you know, how this sweater would hold up. And people said that they really enjoyed it. Um, the recipients of sweaters have really enjoyed it and that it's held up. And really they've lasted well. a long time. Yeah. So, yeah. Good to know. It is good to know. So, this is in the Orca colorway, 123 yards per 50 gram ball. There's, it's very affordable. This yarn is, is very affordable and it feels very like high end and luxurious. It's 55% merino, 25% super fine alpaca, and 20% Donegal tweed. Uh, it's a number three. Number For three. those of you who like to do numbers. And um, I bought 10 skeins, and I've gotten through, like, seven. Really? I don't know how many. I can give you a count if you really are interested. And this is what I have. Let's see. Okay. You guys ready? Oh, dear. Now... So I was here last, I knit that. It doesn't look like that much, but it is a... Dude, this is a lot of knitting. This yeah, looks tell like... me about it. Like, you know come what it on. Lo- <laughs> Wait. What the hell? Do you know what it looks like? What? It looks like a runner. It looks like, like a table a, runner? Or even a floor runner. Like, probably more of a f- hallway runner than a table runner. <laughs> totally. It's so We wild. can put it on the floor <laughs> up here. <laughs> but, so this is it where is, I've got it's a so runner. Far, so much goddamn knitting. Um, I I don't know what to say, except if if Moogie doesn't like this, I am don't know what I will do. I will probably cry for days. She will never get any more dirt cake. I will... Oh, no, she will She will never get another knit item from me. I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's it's actually... The fabric is incredible. I, I already can, you know, can tell you. It's it's so soft. It's, yeah. it's drapey. Uh, it feels like it's going to be nice and warm. Um, so right now, it's just... I'm really on stock in that city. And it's going back and forth, knitting and purling. And... I was going to say for the amount of no... yarn in here, it's not as heavy as you would think. No, it it's actually pretty feel light. Like yeah, it's actually pretty light. Um, so a I heavy have project. one, two, three, four balls left, five balls left, and I'm knitting on one. So I've only knit through four. That cannot be right. Well, you, this what you have left isn't much. It didn't look like. I don't know where it fell. I think it fell down to the floor. No, it's in my bag still. Oh, okay. Let's let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. So maybe I bought more than on 10 balls of yarn. Maybe you bought 12? It's no, that would be 11. It's possible. No, don't. You, how many do you have left in there? Five or six? I thought, I don't remember. Six. So that. Well, five plus the one I'm working on. No, four plus the one I'm working on. So 10. Six. No. Six. Plus, there's five balls in here. Oh. Kevin, you're said, getting me confused. You've changed the number. Four couple. plus the one I'm working on. This is the this is the fifth ball. I would not have bought eleven skeins of yarn. That's bizarre. no. So that's ten. This is ball number six. Right. You have six tags here. I have, Kevin. So you're done. Back. I am so right. <laughs> Watch. <laughs> so you have six there. Six, seven, eight. Nine, ten, eleven. Oh, because the tag is in there. Holy cow. I'm, All right, I'm done. The podcast is now over. We will we'll never podcast again. Thank you. I, that blew up in my face, didn't it? Okay, I don't know where I'm at. I think I had like 15 inches left last time I measured it. So... Do we have a thing up here? Doesn't matter. Uh, measuring tape? Yeah. No. I don't know uh, how this is going to get folded and um, and where, but maybe I'll just be done. Look at that. No. Maybe that could just be it. I feel like... I don't know. I think it's going to... I want to say it's going to be on a diagonal. I think so, too. So I just have to... I'll have to look... I couldn't look ahead in the pattern because I just didn't want to. Okay. Okay. So that is that. That is the... What's it called? Easy Folded Poncho. By Church Mouse Classics. Yes. It is. I mean, it's a, it's a great. 
it's it's really not a bad knit honestly like it it's great tv knitting and the yarn is great to work with i'm using the recommended needles um which i think is like a us six okay maybe all right moving on my next whip is my oh yeah by vincent from Le Garçon. Mm-hmm. i am living in my naughty knitting sack we love her Katie. oh we didn't do our coupon codes we'll do them at the end oh sugar Sugar Plum Fairies. Fornicating Skeletons. Keep moving. Keep moving. Almost there. That's what it says. All right. So this is... Wow, you made so much progress. Living. Um, this I'm knitting out living. of Taki Yarn. Their classic superwash, which is just a blend of wool. It just says 100% superwash. Yeah. And it is 218 yards for 100 grams. Um, it is a DK weight sweater. It's mosaic knitting, and I think these are just colors, or numbered, right? Numbers. <laughs> color three and color seven. Am I oh. right? Color, th- well, that's 17. Oh. Color three and 17. Don't get I it don't confused. Which color seven which. is so different. So this is a nice, again, I talked about this last time, how it's, this looks very blue today. Yes. Right? But in a certain light, it's very green, and then this is just a nice neutral gray. Yes. I don't know where I was last time. What's that stitch marker doing? That's where I was when I picked this back up four weeks ago. I was here. Uh, four weeks ago I was here. I forgot to move it. And right now I am down here. Yeah, you are. You're probably so, ready for ribbing, no? Well, pretty close. We were talking about this Thursday night. Mm-hmm. Um, the pattern itself calls for... 17 inches from your sleeve um, here. I do not have that long of a torso because I am like 5'8", five, 5'9". Five, so I tried this on and it hits me right above my hips. Yeah. So I don't want this sweater to be as long as my Montrealer and go past my butt. Mm-hmm. So what I'm going to do... It's a heavy sweater though, so it's going to stretch. It is very heavy. Stretch. Um, but I need it to grow... I need when I block it. I need it, it to grow here because this is a little tight around my midsection. Mm. Um, Speaking of midsections, I'm we don't starving. have we don't have grated cheese. Oh, we don't have grated cheese. Only a little. I'm wondering if we just do a grinder and just split a grinder. We. This is not um, dinner talk. It is knitting talk. It's you're whatever think, we want to talk. You're about. You're thinking so far ahead, though. What do you mean so far ahead? We got to eat in dinner. like ten minutes. No dinner. Oh. No, I was I'm thinking for, for dinner. Lunch. Okay. I'll figure it out. Um, so, yes. So, this is mosaic knitting. It's knit on a US 7. This is knit on a US 6. And this is knit on a US 5. And this is American Idol. Um, this collar fits beautifully. Yeah. it's really it's, It looks really good on you. This collar is really, really good. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and it was a tubular cast on. Tubular, man. And it's a one by one. Then you got mosaic knitting, and then you knit, finish. Can with you only do one by one with a tubular cast on? I'm pretty sure you can only do one by one. Like a tubular cast on will work for one by one. Well, I believe if you do a tubular cast on, yeah, I think so because you would other otherwise you would have to rearrange your right. stitches. Right, because it's like a six row re, like a six row setup yeah. kind of thing. So yeah, I think I was probably somewhere around here after the last episode. I want to say I had got to this section. Yeah, I think so too. Or I think you did. You definitely did. So, yeah, I am at 12 and a half to 13 inches. I'm going to do about another half of an inch. And then I'm going to start doing my ribbing. That's lovely. Um, so, yeah, I just, I haven't knit on this since 1980. last week. I didn't knit on this at all this I week. Know. So all of my knitting on this happened in a week's time right. frame. Um, and also, I know I showed this, but I really love... The shoulder. Yeah, it's really clever. The raglan yeah. increase. And like I said, this fits me incredibly well in the mm-hmm. shoulders. Like right here, it, you know, where your seam is supposed to be. And it right. ends right here where it's supposed to. So the fit of it is really um, fits very well. It's just I have to stretch out along the middle. It's, but I've, yeah, yeah. My middle's just a little bit wider than it, it used to be. So that is my Boceron. Welcome to 2022. Lovely. Hopefully I will have 
the body of this done by the next episode. Poss- maybe, it's knows, pretty much maybe I'll have a finished sweater by the next episode. Oh, that'll be cool. Because it is spring cleaning, y'all. It is spring cleaning. And that's all I have for whips. That's all my knitting this week. Okay, I have one more that I just cast on March 1st. I did not make much progress in the slightest. But I was... I, yes? Is that from Star Trek? No, I just made that up. That sounded like a... Like an alien language? The people from um, Star Trek, Star Wars. With the hoods. People with the hoods? The little guys. Ewoks? No. No, they're so cute, though. They are cute. Who has it? Oh, the Jawas. Yeah, you sound like a Jawa. Oh, maybe I am at heart. So I now like, you're. I'm an, like a magpie. So I you're an like, Irish, Irish Jawa. Irish Jawa. All right. So um, I wanted to cast this on March first because Michael over at Peace for Peace Crafting, who we love so much, is doing a sweater knit along for his birthday month. It's really two months. Yeah. Um. So I wanted to get on it because it gives me an excuse to get off my butt and start knitting the sweaters that I have lined up on my uh, Q. Q. And I cast on, because I bought this this yarn at Rhinebeck specifically for this sweater. This is the So Basic by Maxim Sear. Um, let me show you the picture. And the yarn I loved. It's actually the um, the only time. This is the So Basic. This came out a while ago. A bunch of people um, knit this, and their versions are so good. A lot of people have um, talked about how great the fit is and just how it's such a perfect like staple to have in your wardrobe. Who did it? Um, I mean, I think... Dramatic a- Knits, Leading Men Five Arts. He, um, he's Hi, done... Bubba. I think he's on his second one. Oh, is he? Yeah. Um... Hey, baby. I know a bunch of people did. Like Jonathan from Jonathan Days. Um, his, I was like looking at his like project page. Um, so this is using Primrose Yarns Primrose in everything. their house base, which is a two-ply fingering weight. It's 50% merino, 50% Shetland. It's approximately 400 yards. The colorway is called Comet, which is beautiful. Uh, it's showing up. Really nice, I think, on the it's camera. A brown, it's like a brown. But it has a yellow undertone yeah. to it. Mm-hmm. So I'm not sure where the name Comet is like came from. It doesn't remind me of like a comet flying through space, but maybe there's like a dog's name Comet or something like that. Or maybe Comet is a uh, reindeer. Oh, maybe. Maybe it's the reindeer because it's brown. Okay. I don't know. So I um I did cast on and I got the the neck done. The ribbing done. This was also a provisional cast on, but this was no tubular cast on, but this was using waste yarn. He has it really uh, laid out very, very well in the in the pattern. I, I just finished picking out all of the the waste yarn yesterday. That's the worst part of yeah. a tubular cast on. Totally. With waste yarn but what a cool look at the like the it edge is gonna is, is gorgeous. Edge. It's yeah. gonna make a really really beautiful um, edge like when I wear it. The yarn is wonderful to work with it's remarkably soft um remarkably do you have your swatch yeah i do so like touching it in the skein it does feel soft but it feels a little bit rustic so i was a little bit nervous that it would be um unyielding and itchy but i swatched which i hated every minute of swatching for this sweater i wanted to get the the most accurate swatch and in order to do that you need to you know knit in the round because the sweater is constructed in the round so i did the technique where you 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 know you knit one way and then you slide your your stitches back and you carry the yarn around back and then just knit again so you end up with a swatch with a bunch of you know strands going back through and then you want to you know cut those or block it it turned out fine, and the the yarn bloomed quite a bit um, as well. All the stitches evened out. The it's very drapey. Um, obviously, it's fingering weight. I'm not gonna ever get this done in two months. A fingering weight sweater. I had never done a thing. I've never done. I mean, this if it was the only thing you did on, maybe it will not be. I know. <laughs> so I I won't. I love the fabric. I think it it's good. You can see through it a little bit, but it's enough. Um. 
it's not going to be one of those like let me go outside in the middle of December with only a fingering weight sweater on, right? I love the color. Yeah, the I think it's going to really be really nice. good for me. So, the the recommended using the recommended needles, which I love the fabric for, but I got twenty four stitches per um, four inches as opposed to uh, Max's gauge, which was twenty six stitches per four inches. I measured my chest. At the moment, I have a 42 inch chest. That's wearing like a shirt that I would um, usually wear underneath the sweater just right. to like have more accurate measurements. So the sizing on this one, the third size is a 41 and a half. And the next size up is a 45 inch um, circumference. So recommends about three to five inches of positive ease. Of course, you can do what you want. But I did the math based on my stitch counts and my gauge, my personal gauge. Looked at the pattern where the the largest number of stitches were will be around you know around the chest. Um, and I inputted like my gauge, my stitches, and divided all of that. And I would end up, if this is accurate and my gauge is accurate, I would end up with a forty five inch finished garment around the chest which will get me about three inches of positive ease and then i can block it i'm sure but this is non-superwash so it's not going to stretch too too much right so we'll see i'm a little bit nervous that Why? like because like what if it is super small although pe- i can block it out and we talked it out i talked yeah, it out quite yeah. a bit on our our knit night and and i think i'm even if you I'm had correct two with all of yeah of positive ease, you're going I don't to be want fine. five inches of negative ease. I feel like that correct. would be very you're difficult. You're not going to get out. negative ease. Yeah, I don't think I will either. Um, you you wouldn't get negative ease either way because well, if I t- but what if I screw up so much and I'm like knitting super tight? So you have the benefit though of being able to try things on as I go. try things on, but you yeah, because it is top down. Um, check your gauge as you're knitting. Yeah, which I will once I get. So now I'm at the point where there's some short rows in the pattern. So I'm at the point now where I'm going to be doing some short rows. But so this is what it's a one by one um, rib. I have the same base, right? For my um, for your primrose once and no, your I have primrose, floral. but for once and floral. Yeah, which I don't know. I'm really jealous of Michael because he's starting his and I can't start mine until I'm done with my Beauceron. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I did. Um. I put in the stitch markers to separate the front and back so that we can start doing some short rows and then um, adding in some of the sleeves, the sleeve stuff to do the raglan. Are you going to make this a, a, a mud, mug rug? No, I want to burn it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I hated every minute of it. But I, know, it, I don't like a, swatching. It's, it's a necessary I don't evil. mind swatching back and forth. But for some reason, I couldn't do that. So the next time I swatch, and mark it on your calendars, so the next time I talk about starting a top-down sweater in the round, or any sweater in the round. Um, tell me to buy extra yarn and then just do a hat in the round so that I can I can measure that. And this way I'll have a hat that I can wear. You okay. know what I'm saying? Okay. And then it'll be less frustration for me. Um, so that's... look how ugly. It's just ugly. Oh, do you hear Ooh, my stomach? I heard your stomach. You're starving. I am starving. Um, so let's do... Now that we're done with all of our knitting, let's talk about some coupon codes. Let's talk about... But, before we do that, let's talk about this. So, if you guys don't follow, this is... Oh, yeah, great. I just saw this this morning. Craftivist. Graham. Graham. Craftivist Graham, who is currently um, running a raffle for Ukraine. Mm-hmm. Right? So... They created a raffle in which all funds raised will be donated directly to on-the-ground humanitarian organizations. Um, so you'll find the links in the bio. And each entry is $10. So you could do six entries for $50 and 15 entries for $100. Um, you screenshot your donation and DM them to enter the raffle. Um, and if you donate, you should receive an additional entry. It's not an affiliate Instagram. So here's all the information. Yeah. We link this on our stories. It's just really a cool, I think it's just a cool way for um, for us to get involved. There were like eight 
um, eight crafters who are donating some of their makes um, to you know a, a winner. I think they're going to choose seven winners. And yes, there will be seven winners. Yep. And it's just it's just I you know I like instead of just here's some some money let me send your way. It's just a way to um, a, a different type of way to support um, you know what's going on and all of that stuff. So we thought it was really really cool. I shared it on our stories. Um, I don't know how we can link something like that in the in a YouTube video, but please yeah. go to Instagram, go to their um, their webpage and or their Instagram post and um, and see if you're if you're interested in helping out. I think it'll be really cool, or at least just you know share it, spread the word. Okay, and then spread the love. We forgot to talk about our coupon code, so we did. here they are. We have naughty knitting socks. We do th- with her Etsy oh, shop, behave. and the code is. Did you say oh behave? Mm-hmm. Why is he crying? No. Oh, isn't that from Awesome Powers? I've never seen an Awesome Powers movie. Stop it! I know. Never. I don't know that I actually like. Um, is what's you probably that? don't. You I probably don't like no. But it's still a stupid one of those stupid funny uh-huh. things to watch where you like cringe half the time. So naughty knitting sacks. The code is prickle pants fifteen for fifteen percent off your order. Trilogy. So many yarns. good quotable moments from there though, like. I know. Get in my belly. That's how I feel all the time. With food? With food. Just get in my belly. <laughs> um, so Trilogy Yarns. Code is NATR15 for 15% off anything excluding her clubs. Which she just... She's ending one and ending her... She's retiring the uh, the drink, drink club. The happy hour club. Okay. And she's toying with some other ideas to add. Yeah, she has friends. She has uh, the Playbill one. Yeah, which is she really has great. The Discovery Broadway ones, witches. Mm-hmm. and then she also has a mini club. Yeah, the as color well. explosion. Color explosion. And then we have Knit Swag, which can both be found on Etsy and knitswag.com. Mm-hmm. Her code is Kevin and Ray, we and that is fifteen percent off your order. Lila Styles, fantastic bag maker. So good. Um, love Natr ten for ten percent off your order. Always Queenie Believe, another bag maker, and the um, bits and bobs. Yes, that little, is so handy. Yeah, oh it's, my god, um, we should have brought it up. I know it's right next to the. Next couch time we'll for talk me. about it. Me too. Um, Mine's right on my Razcog. Easy reach. So she has an Etsy shop, and that is nine inch Cirque for 20 percent off your order. And lastly, Katie did bags, who has an Etsy shop. Her code is Kevin and Ray ten for ten percent off your order. So thank you to all those thank makers for so providing much. us that code. Yeah, it's and thank always, you all for supporting them. Like yeah. we we get messages from them, and it's just really cool. Yeah, it's yeah. fun to hear back. Yeah, it is. Um, so let's talk about some yarn dyeing. Before. Let's do it. All right. So I brought a bunch, which I typically I'm don't bring this again. much. I'm freezing with us. So, um, I've just kind of been having fun. I've been trying to, uh replicate some colors which i've done one yeah. i haven't i tried replicating peppermint bark again guys and oh it did i know not work it still looks really cool though um and then i've just been playing around with different colors that i have that i just haven't done a lot with and i've really been trying to do some speckling which i think i'm getting a little bit better at so i'm going to show two first so we were talking about it and ray was like you should dye a really pale blue yeah. And a really pale yellow. Mm-hmm. So I attempted that. And this was the first blue that I did. Oh, it's gorgeous. But it wasn't as pale as I wanted it's pretty it pale. to be. Um, So this is on, I think, 75.25. So I tried it again. And this is on, I think, 100%. They look similar. No, no. You could definitely see the difference. Mm-hmm. So I went very pale with this one yep so here's the first attempt and then here's the second attempt so there's yeah it's just i mean they're definitely they can coordinate for sure but this one is definitely um a much different one this is i would say really tonal and i don't know if it's going to show here yeah you can see the difference in the um, tone as you go through it so um so that was my first attempt at that right and then he said to do a pale yellow so this was attempt number one. It's so good. This is good, kind though. of like, it's it's good. It's, it's like highlighter ish, but it actually reminds me of a peep. Oh yeah. And so that was attempt number one. Oh, look how one. these are so good together. And then here's this my, is so spring. 
But here's my second attempt, which I really actually am happy with. Are you with. not going to put these up on the shop? Yeah, they're going up on oh, the shop. Oh, good. So here's my second attempt at doing a pale yellow. Mm -hmm. So this one I like way better. This one is, um, again, it's, you know, a tonal. This yeah. reminds me of like buttercream or butter. Mm. You know what? It, yeah. You know what it actually reminds me of? You know, when I do the, um, when I make the dirt cake and I mix the butter and the cream cheese yeah. together, that's what when it reminds me of. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so that was my second attempt at a pale yellow. Um, let's see. So this one, I was messing around with brown and green, and this reminds me of the forest nymphs from the Iron Druid series, which I believe the pronunciation they use is dryad, D R Y A D. So that will mm -hmm. probably. So this is either going to be dryad or forest nymph. Yes, I like forest nymph. I, really I like dryad too, but I like the forest nymph. Is, nymph is cool. This one I don't know. It kind of reminds me of apples, like an apple orchard. I was messing around with green. I don't know, actually. I don't remember what colors. Definitely an orange and a yellow. Yeah. Um, but, you can see the hint of orange in there. But it made some green. Maybe I don't know. It definitely made some green. It's got some white in it still. But I think this one's really pretty. I, I was too. actually really surprised by this. Yeah. This is on BFL, a 7525 BFL. If you guys remember last year when Ray got me the kit to dye, I dyed up some DK weight mm -hmm. and knit the Paris Tajour. Yep. And it's a really nice blue. And it's very, very It's a very nice that. gray with a blue undertone. Yeah. So I've tr been trying forever to replicate it because the dye that I used wasn't Dharma and it wasn't Jacquard. I don't know the brand because it came in the kit. Yeah. So I've just been messing around with it. This right here, that color is really, really close it to it. I should have brought it up. Um, so I like, I'm actually super happy with the way that this came out. This probably looks way more gray on camera than it does in person. It's it's more blue in person. It definitely has more yeah. blue in it. Yeah. This one I'm going to call graffiti. It's a light gray and then it has some speckles in it of blue and yellow and green. Um, this color here actually breaks into all of these colors, yeah. the yellow. So there's some orange speckles. This one's really fun. So, yeah, I think I'm going to call this graffiti. This one, I was trying to get a blue and a teal, but the green came out really, really green. Mm -hmm. So then I threw some gray speckles here and there. I threw some other stuff in the dye bath to really tone it down. Um, so this is just a nice blue green with some grays in it. This one's fun. This one... I was inspired and I wanted to just mess with oranges because, yeah. oh, you know where this came from? I pulled out an orange washcloth, the dishy. Oh. Do we have it back here? Yeah. This one? Yeah. Right? That's actually pretty close. Actually, this is more. So I think I had a washcloth with this. So this is kitchenette. And I was like, oh, let's mess with some different shades of orange. So I did that. I had... Isn't it funny, like, where inspiration can come from? Yeah, I know, you know I had one of these oranges, and then I made one with red and yellow, and I did something else. Then this was, I think, just some grays and purples, or just purples, maybe. But again, I just wanted a speckle. I love the speckling with that, because it looks like the bottom of a swimming pool almost. I know it's purple, but, like, the kind of, like, prisms that you get underneath... Well, that remember that's was one that you saw last time, and that's why we named it like underwater prism. And then this is um, gray with black speckles, so just a bunch of grays and some blue and some yeah. black speckles on it. And really cool. These were still hanging up, so they're not skeins. So this was my attempt to redo peppermint bark. So here's the brown section. There was so much brown dye left that it went into the white section and turned a peach. So then I just did some speckling with a peach mm -hmm. um, dye that I have. So I don't know what I'm going to call this yet. It may be like... It's still very, very pretty. It is. And yeah. I tried not to... It's so fun. Yeah, it is fun. This one here is... Oh, I did some light purple on it. I don't know. This I may mess around with a little bit more. Probably not, though. Because it, it doesn't have as much purple as I thought. So maybe I will. It's got a lot of fun little 
So I just with. like uh, that'll be fun to knit with because it's like, oh, this is new. Oh, this is new. And then I had tried um, a dye that was really, really light and it didn't take at all. So then mm. I just did speckles with a different mm. green. Um, so you got some green variation in there. And then this one's one of my favorites. And I don't know if the color is going to come across. I wanted to keep with my pale colors. And this has a pale blue oh, and a yeah. really pale green. Yeah. That I don't know that it's coming across. And then I did gray speckles on it. Um, I'm going to call this version one. And I'm going to do a second version. Because I really love the green color. I do too. When you can... Um, because I poured the green on first and I saw it and I was like, oh, that's beautiful. So I'm going to um, work on it again. But you know what, too, is you can actually see most of these look way better. You can see the colors more when they're skeined up because it puts them closer together. Yeah. But yeah, and then just some nice little gray speckles. Really fun. So that's kind of, I'm sure there's other ones that I've missed, but this is my one of my favorites. The graffiti is one of my favorites, and I really like Dryad. Yeah, these I love together. All right. Oh, how fun. Moving on to acquisitions. Move along. Move you along. You showed our one. I did. And then, do you have anything else? No. I do. So, I also have my Lake Arsenal back. Mm -hmm. I have not used it yet. Nope. Because I've barely been knitting. And my next purchase. That's a little bit larger than I expected. This purchase yeah. here? Mm -hmm. Why? Did you not know that there were two sides to it? No. <laughs> so guys, as you know, Pearl Soho had a sale. As you know, Kevin has an addiction. Had a sale on their buttercup cotton. And I really enjoy knitting with it and i have these ideas for gifts for people so and there was a amount you had to spend to get free shipping <laughs> so i got some buttercup cotton from pearl soho so here's the first side of colors let's um we have a blue, a green, tomato orange, another blue, and some neutrals, just so that they could be used with all the colors. Right. And then this side is a little more neutral too. So we got some of the heirloom white and the gray that I really like. And this is a lavender, which is really pretty. That is really pretty. Um, sure. Is that a pattern for a blanket right there? It is. So. Mm -hmm. Sorry for the crinks. Oh God, you're taking them all out? Yeah, I gotta put it in my chip basket. Oh, good idea. Where is your chip basket? In the spaum. Spaum. All right. This this orange is nice. Right? It's a pretty yeah. orange. Oh, it's really yeah yeah yeah. So yeah, it comes with. I the, mean, they all go really they all go really well. Together. So this is a granny square blanket that's crocheted and cotton pure. Yeah. Which is not this yarn. No, so, and if yeah. you don't get the pattern. It says to buy yeah. the pattern. So this is tomato. You orange. know, I feel like if you spent that much money, but on it's all a different. Cotton, um, so I got two of the heirloom white because I think that's just a good neutral to have. I purchased two of this one, which is the gray that I've been using, I think. Yeah. No, this is different, right? Gray cloud? I no, it's the same. I think this is, isn't that the gray? This is woodland gray. Yeah. So think... it's a little more brown than this gray. Morning sky. Pale denim. That looks like pale denim. Blue jay. Ooh. Evening blue. That's what I have in this dishcloth. Is it? Mm -hmm. I thought that... Uh, grass green. Lavender fog. This is a really That's pretty That's really color. pretty, though. Yeah. And yeah. then what the hell? Another... Another skein. Morning sky. So I got a lot of blues, apparently, mm -hmm. and a couple grays. Mm -hmm. I just thought, like, oh, we could do orange and blue together. Grays and blues. Orange and white. Blue and white. Green and blue. Green and white. And then you know what, too? I think that this could be fun 
in that same pattern. Use two different things of tissue. You are not allowed to use any other cotton yarn until you get through some of this. Sorry, Mom. Okay. All right, and that was my purchases. Good job. I have not. I've been very good. Yeah, I don't have anything else in planned. I don't think. I don't think I do either. So I think that's everything. Let's talk about. Oh, except what? No, you're right. Because April, we are going to be going to the yeah. Connecticut Sheep and Wool Festival. It's a Saturday, rain or shine. Which is in North Haven, Connecticut. Yep, which is like a 25 minute drive for us. Yeah, not far at all. Mm-mm. We're going to get some Haven hot chicken. Um, we are. We're going to run into some of the knitting posse. I know. I'm so jealous members. that they're they're going today <clears throat> on a little adventure. To New York. To New York. Um, we yeah, invited. so that'll be That was really nice of them to invite us. We have to be better people. Well, like we have an injured dog. Maybe we'll invite them to come to the grocery store with us or something. To the grocery yeah, store? Yeah, I don't know. I feel like we don't invite them places. It's the only place that we go. Don't say we, me. Well, because I hate, I'm terrible at shopping. Um, so I think that's all the knitting content. What have we been reading and watching? Oh, guys, I have read some stuff. Let me tell you. Mm. Oh my gosh. Okay. So I finished. This is actually a legit short episode. As of right now. For us. All right. So I finished. That second book by um, Tal Bauer. Tal? Right? Tal Bauer? Yeah. The Grave Between Us. That was a really dark book. Um, it, there was a lot of graphic stuff in there. Oh, yeah. Um, this was the one where um, it takes place in Des Moines. And there are two FBI detectives who met in book number one. Um, somebody, a, a serial killer from one of their lives comes back into it and it just takes one of the characters to a very dark place. Yeah. Um, I love the two characters. I love, I really, really enjoyed the series. I like Tal Bauer as a male, male novelist. Okay. So, um, highly recommend that. Then I don't know what the heck I was thinking. I decided to go into another dark book. This is called Razor Blade Tears by S.A. S. A. Cosby. This took place in Virginia. Um, the book starts off with two fathers learning that their gay sons who were married were murdered. Um, they were an interracial couple. And the book was about... Like, you, you want to say it's about revenge, but it really isn't. It's about um, hate and kind of like the hate that the fathers feel for themselves for not accepting their sons fully while they were alive. Oh. So the book follows the two of them and kind of on this journey of trying to be the fathers that they should have been sure. by taking care of the people who... Um, kill their sons because the police weren't um, they felt like the police weren't doing anything but you find out later it really wasn't that they they learned a lot about the LGBTQ plus community through this book um, a lot about themselves and one of the lines kind of the father said is that it's never okay to be an asshole but once you realize that you have been and you start to change that that's what you're su- kind of supposed to do right, sure so um i don't know it was definitely there were a lot of like little uncomfortable moments not little there were just a lot of uncomfortable moments between them the two fathers learning about each other too and learning about the hardships that each of them have because the obviously they came from very different backgrounds um and very different economic situations too yeah. between the two of them. So, um, and both of the fathers had been in prison at different points in their lives. So, just a lot of stuff um, in there. It was a really, really good, good read. Um, and then my next book that I'm currently reading is called Sapphire Sunset by C. 
Travis Rice, who's also Christopher Rice. Right. He That's what you were saying. It, um, is using C. Travis Rice because this isn't his normal genre of writing. This is a male-male romance. But even more than that, um, I'm about, I don't know, 30% into it. It follows t- the two main characters meet at a... So main character number one is an ex-Marine. Main character number two is the heir to a resort in California called Sapphire Cove. Oh. So he, you know, comes from the family with money, blah, 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 blah. They meet and things don't really go as you would typically expect. There's a fallout really early. There's a time jump and um, they meet years later and they are trying to save the one thing that they both love, which is Sapphire Cove. So... Um, so far so good. It's as of right now, it's going to be a two book series. Okay, and it's like it's a good book. That's good. I, I've I've read plenty of his other. books. I've never read anything by Christopher Rice. I don't think. Oh, you should start with a Density. unless I. Oh, I you read, read Density, Density of, Souls. of Souls, and I think there was one that called Snow something. What was Density of Souls about? Something I I actually I probably will reread that this year. I think I have the hard cover downstairs. Yeah, you do. Um. From what I remember, it was like three friends and there something happens one night in like their high school days and it comes back in the future, like later on. So uh, it must have been years and years ago. Yeah, I've it? read that when it first came out. Yeah, I haven't read it since. Um, but yeah, so that's what I've been reading. How about nice. you? Nice. I, um, I finished one book and started another. Mm-hmm. I finished The Midnight Library by Matt Haig. Haig? Um, I found this book really entertaining it's it talked a lot about like you know regrets and it's almost it's almost like big picture the grass isn't always greener on the other side right okay um you know the concept the concept is this this uh woman is not very happy with her life and a lot of stuff happens to her but she just hits a you know a, a all-time low and she decides to end her life and then wakes up and finds herself in the middle of this library. And her childhood librarian um, kind of like personifies like her thought processes and decisions that she's going to be making. And kind of tries to guide her through on all the books like our different different lives based on like it could be a single decision that she's made <clears throat> or path. And she tries on these lives, you know, um, which is really interesting. She learns a lot about herself. Um, and the cool concept, and I don't want to give too much away, but the, the there's a, a theme of like working through your regrets um, in order to not really regret them anymore. Okay. Um, and like rewriting your regrets, but realizing that you don't necessarily need to rewrite them. You just need to, to realize that it's okay. Mm-hmm. Um, which I thought was really cool. Yeah. Like was really cool. But yeah, I found it good. The character was relatable. I thought the... Um, you know the lives were similar and and different you can kind of see like her struggle and her growth and it it was a, a shorter read i thought it wasn't you know a huge like novel i didn't think because the way that i read you know it's like 10 mm-hmm. minutes and i'm ready to go to sleep but i feel like i read it in like a week something like that week and a half then i moved on to uh so i highly recommend it i, I do highly recommend the book um, then I moved on to this ditty, which I'm so loving right now. This is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. It's by V.E. Schwab. There's the, the cover. It's so good. I think it's so good. I didn't know, um... It came up as, like, my recommended reading. and It looks like a whole bunch of people have read this, so it's, like, pretty high up there, I think, on the bestseller list. Um, This one is kind of interesting because there is another uh, female lead who is not very happy with where her life is going. It starts in the the 1700s. She ends up, like, making a deal... I'm going to say deal with the devil because we don't really know who devil. it is, but it's like the spirit being God, creature, dark, whatever. Um, yeah, makes a deal. And basically she cannot really affect any, she can't die. 
so she she um continues to live on but the the premise is that she lives on and can continue to suffer like he made it you know you like you make a deal with the devil like that classic deal with the devil thing you there's a clause there's always a a catch right or a clause right and so this one was that she can you know she'll i forgot like the wording that they use but um she basically doesn't ever have to answer to anybody else um and she you know she'll continue on living and never grow old and and uh never change her looks but there's a catch. She can't anything that she does. Um, people forget about her the minute that they like turn their back or close the door. So she can't ever develop a relationship. Um, she continues to like, you know, live the same interactions with the people that she like sees on the streets, you know. And she tries to have relationships. She can't even like write. Every time she tries to write something, it gets I was like, just gonna erased. There's one scene, and this isn't giving really anything away, because like the, it's really neat the concept, like where it's going and where I'm at now. But I, I won't share that. You guys should definitely read the book. But I found it interesting that she, there was one scene where she's sitting on a couch drinking some red wine, and she spills the red wine on this cream colored couch, and you know she's it says that she just she just leaves it there and she watches it and the stain just kind of disappears, just oh. like every. Anything that she does just disappears. Um, so it's she has no effect. On no, so it's literally the world around right. Her. But she is. There are certain caveats to that and she's found some ways to inspire others, which is really interesting. Um, so in that like case, she kind of takes on that. Um, what's it? What's it called when you find your uh, like an artist will find their muse. muse. So she kind of can act like a muse okay. in that sense, interesting. which is really interesting. So, you know, so it really is um, literally the invisible life of um, Addie LaRue because everything she does. I've is heard invisible. about that and just haven't. It's super read it. cool. It's a really interesting concept. I can't. I find myself not wanting to stop reading. The author does a great job. Um, Hi, Bubba. Hey, baby. Perfect. Give us just a minute. Yeah, it's lunchtime. We're gonna be wrapping um, things up soon. And then, so that's what? it. Watching wise, we watched Encanto. Oh, I loved it. Um, I loved it. We don't talk about Bruno. We don't talk about Bruno. Um, yeah, it was cute. It was definitely a cute. Movie. It was very cute. They did a really good job, I think, with the animation. Yes. Right. I like, mean, animation is way different than when we were. Kids. It totally is. But, but the the main character, um, Maribel. Yeah. Like her flowy like skirts and like the dresses right. that she wears and like her facial expressions, her glasses. I, I thought she was such a believable character. Like they all were so be- like believable. They did. And I knew throughout it though, I knew what was causing the issue in the movie. You did? I did. I, I knew where it was going to go with that. I knew that mm-hmm. it was, I was so caught up with it like, w- this is fun. It was that person. Yeah. Who was the catalyst for everything. Sure. Yeah. Um, so that was really cute. It was cute. It we, was very, very cute. I would watch it so many more times. Um, we're still watching Lucifer season six. I mean, now though, from now until probably April, April, there's going to be a lot of basketball on in the house. Cause it's my favorite time of year. March madness, March madness. So, um, tons of basketball will be on in the house. Um, and yeah, I don't know that we've watched much else. I feel like I've watched something. Oh, we we had on Under the Tuscan Sun the other oh, night, which I love that movie. That's another with good movie. Diane Feels Lang. Good. Hi, Diane Lang. I love you. And Sandra Oh. Mm-hmm. It's actually funny. So Diane Lang, Sandra Oh, and then what's her face also? Kate Walsh. Kate Walsh. Was in there. And then yeah. the guy who played Rory's dad and Gilmore Girls is in it. Yeah. And then the guy. Yeah. it That's such a good movie. It is. Um, it's a great movie. So I think that's it, yeah, y'all. Did you say yo? Y'all, I said. Oh. Yeah, I think that that's it. So the next, um... so if you were one of our winners, oh yes. please reach thank out you. to us. Thank you. Um, and will... congratulations, and thank you for participating, everybody. Honestly, it's a lot of fun. And then we will have the threads up for the spring mail, spring cleaning mail. Mm-hmm. And Parkwin's crying. Parkwin's crying because it is his lunchtime. I know. Twelve thirty. It's mine too. So I know. Um, so thank you guys. I, we hope you guys have a good two weeks, and we will catch you in a fortnight. Bye, Bye y'all.